Good morning. I'm Marty Kaplan. I'm the director of the Norman Lear Center at the USC Annenberg School. And the deputy director, Johanna Blakely, is here. And uh, that's Johanna. And if you're interested in learning more about the Lear Center, there is a brochure out uh, at the table. And we invite you to have a look and get to know us. Uh, I'm going to start with uh, some housekeeping and uh, overall comments about the day. Uh, over there, you see a large blank board. It is going to be filled in uh, four times during the day. And the person who's going to be doing it, Lloyd Dangle, is over there. So if you discover someone uh, writing and drawing, that's what's going on. Those will be made available. They'll be posted. You're welcome to talk to Lloyd if something that you said is represented or misrepresented. And you'll also be able to get these afterwards as one of the several records uh, of, of what the day will entail. Uh, there is a more traditional record that will be prepared. Uh, and the rapporteur for that is David Bollier. Where's David? He's right there. He is a senior fellow of the Lear Center. He has done this many, many times for institutions like the Aspen Institute, and he will produce a, a terrific uh, record of and key themes of what occurred today. We'll hear a bit from him at the end. Um, there will be no formal bathroom break. Instead, or no formal coffee break. Instead, uh, we welcome you whenever you feel the need for beverages, which will be always out there, uh, to simply get up, go, and come back. It's entirely uh, uh, in your hands. Uh, Wi-Fi is supposed to be working and excellent in this room. Um, uh, uh, if you use Twitter, our hashtag is USC Creativity. A number of people today will be live tweeting the event. If that makes no sense to you whatsoever, perhaps uh, this is the right place to be. Um, there will be questions and answers built into every session. We hope a lot of questions and answers. This is not meant to be come hear the presentations. It's meant to be a conversation as a whole with uh, really interesting people sparking and provoking and setting the table for those conversations. At lunch, you may notice that there is no lunch speaker. And the reason is that by the time we get to lunch, we're imagining that you have a lot of things you want to talk about with each other. And so we have encouraged that. And in, instead of banging a glass and asking everybody to keep quiet so our speaker can start, lunch is a time for everybody to talk with one another. And at the end of the day, we have built in an additional chunk of time for people to talk with each other, reflect on the day, and, and move forward. Um, I want to thank you all for coming. Uh, as Randy said, there are some notably distinguished people here in the room. You know who you are. <laughs> I do want to thank, in particular, uh, some people who made today possible. In, in addition to Randy, there are lots of moving parts in an event like this. And rather than wait till the very end, I'd love to thank them when, they're, when we're fresh. And so I'm just going to mention all their names and then invite you uh, to warmly thank them. Our uh, Lear Center interns, Perry Johnson, Marlene Vigil, Maya Manikal, and Julie Tang. Lear Center staff, Scott McGibbon, Chris Wheatley, Clemente Ladrido, and uh, also Rosary Vidak from uh, Randy's office. And a particular big, big thanks to two people who have not slept much working on this project uh, from our office, Adam Rogers, and from Randy's office, Dale O'Donnell. So please join me in thanking them. So for the Lear Center, this event is part of a continuing project, which we have been up to uh, for going on 10 years now, uh, called Creativity, Commerce, and Culture. We have been looking at how technology affects creative industries. Digital technology has, for example, devastated the music business. 
It threatens the newspaper business, but technology can also foster innovation and creativity. We have been looking at that as it plays out in various sectors, and from our perspective, we are trying the where the lens of looking at the academy as a creative industry in this same sequence to see whether we can learn something in particular from that perspective. Last spring, we held five faculty workshops on creativity, collaboration, and the role of technology in innovative research. If you look up there, you can see the range of topics. They were uh, held all across uh, this campus and also at the Health Sciences campus. And I'm going not to read what's up there, assuming that you're able to do that at your own speed, <laughs> which is now, uh, I'm calling time. Uh, these events were focus groups. They were group interviews. A number of you uh, here today were at them. We gathered together 55 faculty in 30 disciplines representing 13 schools and five research institutes and, as I said, met on both campuses. We asked three questions. I will read these. What are the best practices in research collaboration that you know? What are the barriers to research collaboration at USC? And how can USC further develop a culture of innovation that supports creative ways to conduct and collaborate on research? And what happened in those focus groups will now be what Johanna will talk about. Hello, everyone. I'm just going to go over some of the, a few points that came up during the workshops. Uh, they were very rich with information. If you were here earlier on and you saw the slideshow that was going on, it was a series of suggestions that had come from faculty out of those workshops. So I'm going to highlight a few here. First, we asked about best practices. And, you know, this stuff doesn't happen without money. And so people talked about the funding programs that made it possible for really large interdisciplinary projects to happen. And they mentioned in particular uh, a program from NIH and from NCI. They also mentioned some interdisciplinary visiting scholar programs, sort of in-residence programs where people can marinate in ideas uh, with scholars from vastly different disciplines. And two universities were profiled in particular, University of Michigan, which has a big cyber infrastructure project going on now, and Syracuse University, which has a scholarship in action program that's university-wide. And it's really about many things, including connecting with the community and taking what happens in the academy out of the academy. Of course, we talked about barriers. Uh, it's difficult to do collaborative, creative research. That's, that's why we're having this conference today. One of the main problems, I'd say, is that there are conflicting priorities in different disciplines. So it's really hard to come up with a research topic that makes everyone in your research group happy. They have different kinds of deliverables and different kinds of expectations depending on their discipline. Physical distance was mentioned over and over again by USC faculty, saying just being on a different campus, being on an off-campus center, made it harder to find people to work with. Ownership and control issues become even more profound when you have big interdisciplinary collaborative groups. The IP issues get more complicated, and it's even more essential that you have a, a deep sort of trustworthy relationship with these people. Tenure guidelines, many people said, really need to be changed. To, uh, f to better respect collaborative research. Scientists, in particular, said that incompatible data sets were a huge barrier to collaboration. And it's very expensive to create the kind of technical infrastructure you need in order to make this uh, data readable to lots of different people with lots of different research priorities. And maybe the biggest problem is that collaborative research projects take more time than individual research projects. You just have a lot more variables in motion. People offered us a lot of really, really interesting solutions to these problems as well. So I'll focus on just a handful here. I cannot tell you how many times it came up that people said, we want more social time with our colleagues and with people across campus that we never see. Give us time for wine and cheese, and we promise you we'll come up with some cool research collaborations. Mm -hmm. 
They also asked for a collaborative workspace. Susan Mitros is here, and we'll talk a bit about uh, what she's doing uh, in, in, in that area. They talked about revamping tenure guidelines. Many people suggested different uh, options for creating a searchable faculty research directory. I know this is definitely a personal issue of mine. It's hard for me to find the people at USC who are doing the kind of research that, that uh, I, need to, I need to collaborate with these people. So they can be right under my nose, but it's, it's very hard to find them. It's often through happenstance. Technical training is essential if we really want faculty to use these amazing new digital tools. You need to train people. Um, and a few people suggested that USC actually take the lead in developing new digital publishing tools, not just waiting for the journals to do it, but for actually to make it a university effort. I have a few more solutions here. Ooh, let's spin around. Fresh blood. People said it's really important to bring in new people. You bring in a visiting scholar, even if they come just for a day, what they can do is sort of catalyze new uh, relationships and connections among faculty who are actually right here. A lot of people said, faculty said, that the multidisciplinary projects that they're working on right now actually started as projects that their students brought to them, because their students were interested in doing collaborative research. So uh, one of our findings was that people felt there should be far more incentives for undergraduates and graduates to do collaborative research. Some people suggested that we do a sort of inventory of best practices in collaborative research. Not all collaborations work or are good. So what works? Funding, of course, is a key issue. Everybody wants money. Randy knows that. But it was interesting that quite a few people said, you know, we often just need stopgap funding. We need little grants that will help us get over the hump between big grant cycles. Also, people mentioned that it's important to actually recruit faculty who have a history of collaborative research success. If they've already shown that they know how to do this kind of work, then they're going to come here and probably do a lot more of it. And I'd say there are quite a few people who are very optimistic about USC being the institution that could actually pull this off. Unlike a lot of big public universities and unlike uh, a lot of I Ivy League schools, USC has some leeway to really change the direction that the academy is going in. When you RSVP'd to this event, we invited you to react to some of the suggestions that were made in the course of those uh, faculty workshops. Um, I know a number of people here uh, are spend their lives crunching numbers, and uh, you're all uh, familiar with the, the issues in a, in a survey. So in the interests of transparency, I'd like you to know that 82 people looked at the survey, 62 partially filled it out, and a total of 35 of you actually completed it. Based on that, nevertheless, I'm going to tell you what you said. One hundred percent said revise the tenure guidelines to reward creativity and encourage collaboration. Sixty percent yes on seed funding, forty percent more space for collaborative research, Nearly that for a searchable faculty research directory, kind of a match.com for faculty. Uh, social spaces uh, at 34%, as were incentives for graduate students and uh, hiring faculty with a history. In addition, we had an open-ended comment section, and those comments uh, reflect if you were here earlier, before we started, uh, a number of the comments that were on the screen, which are quotes from those workshops, I'm just going to pick out a few. One, um, at a faculty development event, someone wrote, we were told the one thing that is known about promotion is this, do not start a new line of research. This seems quite counterproductive to this initiative. Another comment, no one goes to places outside their regular orbit. The two obstacles are always the same, tenure risks for doing the work and social inertia at starting it. And lest you think because of our interest in technology that was only something that people talked about, it was true in the online comments as well as in the workshop. Uh, Here's one, transdisciplinary faculty often have an office on one campus, but meetings on another. We need offices as well as spaces for collaboration, a place to be. 
So we have only a few hours today. That's not enough to change the world or even the university. But the intent is that this is part of a continuing process. What are the next steps? In effect, you are going to decide what you think next steps should be. There are people here whose ears uh, are waiting to hear what you think about those things. And my sense is a spirit of goodwill and excitement about being able to move a lot of this forward. For our part, the Lear Center is going to provide you with as rich a record of what happened here as we can, as well as making a interactive a web resource that combines all the information we can find about professional societies and other academic institutions and how they're grappling with this in order to have a, a, a research-rich inventory for you. And of course, we really look forward to seeing what Lloyd is going to be doing up there. I want to uh, thank, in particular, from the uh, Lear Center staff, Veronica Howdeke, for creating this Prezi.